today we're going to be going over our Grand Villas by sale by Forest River. It's a 42 view. We are going to be starting right up front here. Basically, this guy here is so that you're going to be able to get on and off the tow vehicle. But this is also how you level the camper from front to back. I do have to make note that this is considered to be a park model. So this is not meant to be hooked up and just taken everywhere once a week or wherever. This is a one destination location spot for a camper. Uh, but basically once you've unhooked, you want, do want to make sure you're level from side to side first. Let that tow vehicle help roll onto some blocks if you need them to to level out from the side to side. And then level front to back with these guys. Uh, these guys do not have stabilizer jacks. What these guys actually have, since this is a park model, is they have what they pretty much the angle iron there with the holes there so you can install straps to the ground pretty much like you would on a mobile home so next back behind that's going to be where our 230 pound tanks are located these guys have both been filled minus what was used to check the propane system this guy here is going to be your regulator this tells you what tank you're using by this little notch that's on here but it also tells you when the canister is empty as you see right now, it's reading red because it does not sense any propane flow. So I'm going to go turn this guy on. Give it just a second there. That guy's going to flip the green, showing us that we have a propane flow. The nice thing about this is that this is designed to where you can actually have both tanks on if you wanted to. Once the one tank is emptied, it will start drawing from the other tank. But you don't know that that tank is empty unless you come out here and look at this regulator. Okay, it'll read red because it's trying to pull from the tank that's empty. All you do then is just swap it over. This guy would flip to the green. You're going to be good. Take this eye off and go get it refilled. Back behind there is where our battery is located. It's a 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. And then they kind of got it hidden down here in the back. Back behind here is where your battery disconnect is located. Pretty much whenever you're, you're not using your camper, you're going to turn this key and pull it out. What it does is it disconnects the camper from the battery, so if anything was left on, it wouldn't potentially drain your battery on you. But whenever you are using your coach, you do want that key in and in that off position, or in that posi twisted lock position. All right. These guys here are on for travel purposes so that the uh, glass wouldn't get damaged or anything like that while it's being hauled. We're gonna have our bedroom slide. Uh, basically, you have a hydraulic slide system, so these guys operate off one switch. It'll always bring the bedroom out first, and then the, uh, what I like to call a super slide, because it's just ridiculously long. Uh, but then it'll bring out that slide, and then when you go to bring it in, same concept. The bedroom slide will come in first, and then the kitchen slash living room super slide will. You do have storage underneath the bed. Inside here are going to be your little cover caps. These guys are for the tires. I haven't put them on, so we can kind of talk about those guys. We got our 50 amp power cord that comes with the coach. You do have hookups for a central back. And then this guy right here is a table that will get mounted above a window on the other side. It comes with a couple cup holders. And pretty much, you know, you can hang your barbecue grill stuff. This guy actually sits really high off the ground. The reason why is because, once again, this is a park model, and most people will put a deck along that front edge. When you do that, that table is going to be right at a perfect level for you. All right, as we come around to this side here, we're going to have our fresh water tank. Uh, this guy is gravity fed, so basically you just kind of stick your hose in there and let it start filling. You do want to read the monitor panel inside so that when it does read full, you want you to shut that water off. You don't want to wait till the water starts shooting back out at you. When that happens, what can, over time, that can cause damage to both the outside of the coach and inside where this is actually connected. To drain that fresh water tank is gonna be located down below here. Just by simply pulling this, you'll drain that water out. Looks like we've got just a little bit in there still. And then below that is going to be our city water connection. Basically with this, you do wanna make sure that you use a pressure regulator at the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. Hook it up, you'll be ready to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait till that water heater heat, uh, fills before you get water coming from the hot side. That will take a few minutes for it to actually fill. You have a residential water heater in this. And I'm gonna show you that here in just a few moments. 
Next, we're going to have the furnace area, pretty much your intake and your exhaust. Uh, we do not want to try to block this of any way like that so we can properly breathe. But we do like to recommend mud dauber nests to put over these guys. They're like little eyeball looking screens. Uh, basically, it helps keep the mud divers and wash and keep out of there so they don't build a nest and create potential issues later down the road. We do have a, that, that little piece up top there is actually considered to be as an overflow uh, to make uh, slash breather uh, for your tank. We'll talk about the tires once we get to the other side. You do have this notice sticker on both sides of the coach. Basically, it's just to uh, let you know you want to check those lug nuts at 50, 100, and 200 miles. And they do get torqued to 100 foot pounds. We'll show you those when we get a better view of those tires. All right, as we come around here to the back side of the other slide, inside here is where that residential water heater is going to be located. Right now, I actually had this open so I could drain the water out so it wouldn't potentially get stagnant or bad. Pretty much to drain that guy, you're going to open this to, so it has some top airflow. And then this here is going to be your valve that you would turn to drain that water heater. Pretty much has a hose that comes out and drains right out. This guy here is actually in line so that the water can go into the water tank and then come out. Whenever you go to winterize your coach, you do want to turn these valves like this to where that antifreeze is going to come through your blue line like so. But instead of going into the water heater, it's going to go up and around. Believe me, you'll use a lot of antifreeze if you don't bypass this. Uh, generally, if you can get all the water out of your coach, you can usually winterize this guy with probably anywhere between three to four gallons of antifreeze. That's as long as all of the water is out of this coat. Uh, I take that back. I'm sorry. I forgot you actually got the ice maker in here. You will probably use closer to maybe five gallons of antifreeze. I do apologize for that. Uh, we'll talk about that once we have stepped inside. Shut that guy off. This guy is controlled by an electrical switch or by an electric switch. It is located in the bathroom, and I'll show you guys that once we have stepped inside. So this guy here is going to be that black tank flush. This guy's like a sprayer inside the black tank, sprays around, and gets all that nastiness out. When you go to hook up to this, we do like I do like to recommend that you use a pressure regulator on the spigot again. But go out and buy yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose, keeps it simple. Uh, but then you'll hook up to this guy. The reason why you want that re that pressure regulator is because on the back side of this is a plastic check valve. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. But from there, you're going to make sure you got your sewer hose in hooked up, going into the sewer area, then you're going to pull your black handle. Basically, this is our gray, but you'll pull your black handle like so and start dumping. From there, then you're going to turn on your water and start flushing. Most sewer hoses come with a clear elbow. So whenever that water's coming out good, clean, and clear, you're going to shut the water off at the spigot, unhook your hose, and then unhook from here. And then you'll close off your black and open your gray to chain the gray. You never want to leave the black tank valve open if you're at, you know, because it's going to be at a permanent destination. You want to have some kind of liquid in the bottom of that tank so that, that way our nasty business doesn't get stuck to the bottom of that tank and starts forming what I like to call a poop mountain. I apologize for the nastiness, but you guys just need to be aware. You need to also want to use a clear or a chemical inside that when you go to use it, either a liquid or pouches. If you use pouches, I always recommend making sure there's water in the bowl of the toilet first. Put the pouch in the bowl of the toilet, see that pouch dissolve. I have seen pouches where they have not dissolved. Next, you're going to have your low point drains. These guys here is going to be part of winterizing your coach. Basically, open these guys up. Then go around, open up all your faucets, hot first, then cold. Helps get any of that excess water on those lines for you to make it a lot easier with the winterizing. Then we're going to have our outside shower, your options of hot and cold water from here. And it does have a little push button on it to stop the flow of water. Mainly that is usually designed for the smaller water heaters because most campers only come with a six gallon water heater. You shouldn't have to worry about that as much with this bigger one that you guys got going on here. Then this other one here on the back, there is no valve for this. This is basically a direct hookup for the washer drain. So if you decide to put a washer and dryer in here, it's just direct ducted. So you do have to make sure that that cap is taken off and the hose is hooked up to it when you go to use your washer. Okay, there is no valve for it. Where your 50 amp power will hook up is right here. You got another overflow tube right there, or overflow breather there. 
this here is where you would hook up for your campground cable or if you guys had a satellite dome uh, basically those guys are going to hook up right into there this is going to be your fan for the bathroom we'll show you that once we have stepped inside come around and see we do have our awning open it is one thing to recommend it that you should never leave the camper unattended or if you're going to leave your camper unattended you should always bring your awning in you never know when a strong gust of wind will come along or a pop-up storm uh, too strong of winds can cause damage both to the awning and to the camper we also have an option to where you can pull this down i'm not very tall so and you will need a step ladder as well to be able to do this but it's easier from this side but you're able to grab here pull down and create a pitch on there that is meant to be as a shade protectant. They recommend if it is going to be raining, you should bring your awning in. Next, we're going to have our one entry door. This is going to be controlled with the purple key on your keychains. For the door handle lock, the key will turn to the right. For the deadbolt on the bottom, you have to turn the key to the left and then turn it back straight up and down to pull the key out. If you turn it to the right to try to lock the deadbolt, you're able to pull that key out from the right position. It shows you you did not lock the deadbolt. Your steps are real nice and simple. These guys here just fold and then fold. Real nice and simple. And then touch your air, pull there, pull it out, and then just drop down. This here is going to be so you can leave your door propped open if you wanted to. We do got our outside speakers on. There is a switch inside where you can actually turn the lights on and off to the speakers. Just a little ambiance kind of view. We do have a TV hookup and an outside 110 that is GFCI protected. This guy here is where you would hang that table. Like I said, it sits pretty high up, so we ain't trying to barbecue way up there. So then we're back to these tires again. Once again, we do want to make sure these lug nuts are torqued to 100 foot pounds. At 50, 100, and 200 miles, I always like to recommend, well, I usually recommend once you leave the campground, you would recheck these while you're filling. But since this is a final destination spot, you guys are a final destination camper, you guys are not really going to be periodically checking the lug nuts because you're not really supposed to be pulling this guy anywhere. The only thing that you would need to try to do is make sure these tires are topped off to their max PSI level. And these guys are 100 PSI, okay? They do have the green caps to show that there is nitrogen in these tires. You can put regular air over the top of them and it's not going to hurt them. If you ever decide that you do want to put nitrogen back in them, and you take it and you pull it somewhere to do that, or you take the tires off to go have that done, let them know that regular air has been put in them so they know to purge the tire to try to get majority of that air out. Usually when there's nitrogen in the tires, it's usually anywhere between 95 to 98% nitrogen and that remainder number is regular air. Okay, they just can't get all those air out of that tire all the time. Next we have the sliding glass door. Once again, you got the tri-fold steps in to go in. And there's another sticker that tells you about the uh, lug nuts. It tells you to go in that star pattern and it tells you 100 foot pounds right on there. And then they do provide an extra 110 outlet over here at the front of the coach as well. Okay, as we go to step inside here, you are going to have a fire extinguisher located right to the, it's a little hidden behind our blinds here, but right here near our entry door. We do have control panels here, but we're gonna come back to this one in just a second. We're gonna direct our attention right over here to this guy right here. Uh, so basically with our main control panel here, it's gonna tell you the status of your battery, your fresh water tank, your black tank one, you do not have a black tank two, and then your gray tank, and you do not have a golly. You got the water pump, you're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. This here is going to be for your awning lights to turn them on and off. This is for those outside speaker lights. And then you got your ceiling lights. Now this is one of two switches for your ceiling lights. All right, this switch has to be on and then you're able to use the dimmer switch located up here at the top. Pretty much just to turn it on and to turn it on, or turn it off, turn it on. But you can press and hold. Press and hold. And the lights will go dim. So if you're trying to have a little nice romantic evening, you got a fireplace, lay down a little bare rug, and have you a nice little romantic evening if you wanted to. Just press and hold, and we'll brighten those guys right back up so we can kind of see a little bit. 
and then we have our options to bring the slide room in or slide rooms in and out like i said we always do the bedroom first and then our kitchen slash living room side this switch down here is going to operate the ceiling fan over the living room area and then we're going to have our thermostat here this one here is going to control the air conditioner in the back but this is also what controls our furnace i am going to turn this off and start at the beginning basically when you first turn on your little space bar looking guy it's going to light up the screen and then you'll start in the off position from there you have fan low and fan high so that's just the fan that will come on and then you got cool high and cool low and these two settings here the air conditioner will just continuously run it will not shut off to the desired set that you have it set to then after that you have cool low auto and cool high auto and that's where that would set to your desired temp i have it set at 65. when i first plugged this guy in this morning it was 87 degrees in here uh i have both air conditioners going and it's been in about two hours or so so it's actually doing really good uh and then the uh, last option is going to be heat that is propane only so the propane does have to be on and the canisters do have to be full uh for the furnace to be operational okay so next we're gonna still come back to our control panel here in just a moment but we're gonna travel this direction here towards the bedroom area All right, so next we're gonna have our thermostat here for the front air conditioner, which is located above the bedroom area here in the kids' bunk. We'll see that in just a moment. Uh, but this one here only operates the front one. It'll give pretty much the same options, but it doesn't offer you the heat option. So you got the fan low, fan high, cool high, cool low, and then cool low auto and cool high auto. And then once again, just set that desired set temperature. Uh, then we got our light switch here. Turn it on and off for the bedroom. This guy here is going to be your fire exit window if you could not make your way to the doorway. And then we also are going to have our TV antenna booster located right here. So if you guys are having campground cable, you have to turn off this booster for that signal feed to come through. Okay, when this booster is on, it's considered the antenna as the primary source of the, of the you know, signal feed. So you have to shut that source off for that cable signal to come through. All you got to do is just push that button. And that's all you got to do. And the other one here is if you had that satellite dish. You got your storage below or your dresser area below. Uh, then you got your three double windows here. Uh, each one's got, all got the blinds. You got individual readers on each side of your bed. Okay. Um, and then USB hookup and a 110 on one side. We have our screen door for the sliding for the sliding doors. This does not get put on until it has reached its final destination. Okay. That is why this has not been installed on the coach at this time. And then as you kind of combed around, you're gonna see our fireplace is completely out of the wall here. Well, I'm not the engineer of this guy, but this is where they put your entire system to winterize your coach. So right over in here, and I might have to steal this from our camera lady so you guys can kind of see everything. But basically you're gonna have your valve here that you would turn. And then it goes to this hose right here that would go into your bucket or jug of antifreeze. I always recommend if you're using more than a couple gallons of antifreeze, just put it into a five gallon bucket. It makes it a lot easier. And then you got that lower one right down there. That's so you can actually bypass and shut off the ice maker. Right now it is in that on position, but whenever you go to winterize your coach, you do have to make sure that that does also get winterized because water has gone through that. Okay. So you'd have to winterize that as well. That's why you're going to use extra antifreeze. Um, but that's all there really is with that. And then from there, you just turn on your water pump to uh, winterize your coach. Uh, this guy has four screws that goes into each corner. And then there's two smaller screws here that go right in here on each side. Once you put the glass on to secure that glass so it wouldn't potentially pop out of there. So to use the fireplace, uh, you actually have two fireplaces in the coach. So what they did is they put them on the same breaker, but then they have it on a switch. So in here, it says fireplace, but if you go up, that's going to be the one for the front. And then the one in here. Should be able, as you see, it just kind of lit up. I'm able to turn that on real quick. I don't want to leave it on too long because we do have our air conditioners running. Uh, we ain't trying to trip that breaker. Uh, but basically in the middle is going to be the off position for both fireplaces. It's just designed so that 
you know, if you're hanging out in the living room, you can have that fireplace going, but if you're ready to come to bed, you just flip that switch and you can use this one. And then you got your little closet space in here, drawer here, and then you got your mirror. Uh, the, you can lift the bed to access the storage from underneath, uh, where I showed you all that stuff from outside. Uh, the fireplace does come with its own remote as well. All right. And then as we come back out, we are going to have two storage areas here. And then we're going to have our pretty little spiral staircase here. Pretty much, uh, if you're an adult, I'm going to tell you now, you got to come in at a sideways. The first time I went to do this, I went like this and literally smoked my knee right on that third step. All right, so you do have to, as an adult, go up this sideways so you don't bang your knees. But basically over here, uh, when we come up, I tried to have this slid over last time so you can see, but basically you're gonna have your light switch for up here. You got 110 on each side. The other side does have a hookup for the TV. But then you got your center piece here where there's a bunch of storage bins. Go ahead and just snag this from her. You kind of see that, you got the storage bins. Each side also has a 110 and USB hookup on both sides. Another 110 right there. And then you do have a fire exit window located right there in case they couldn't make their way to the doorway to get out. Up here is our main air conditioner. We turn, close those guys off. That'll start sending our air through the ducting. Um, and they're both designed like that as well. All right. It's not so fun as an adult trying to go up and down these spiral streets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, I am gonna sidetrack just for two seconds. We're gonna come back over here to this side where our other panel was we were talking about in the beginning. So up here, this is where you can control. You got three upper shades, one, two, and three. And then you have four lower shades. You got these two here, this one, the one behind the TV, and then the two on your slide room. Basically what you'll do is you'll turn these switches on and you can raise them up. Bring them all up at the same time, all down at the same time. You can do it individually if you want, just by turning those switches off. So if I just wanted to bring just my one upper shade here, upper shade one, up. Now you can have all the shades on at the same time and operate them all at the same time. The one thing that you cannot do is you cannot have these all on at the same time. The TV, you do have to make sure these shades are all shut off for the TV to lift it up and down. All right. So then after that, this here is gonna be what brings our awning in and out. Pretty much extend and retract. See that guy kind of coming in on us, but he's not the fastest guy in the world. And then we're gonna have our three white switches. This one here is going to be just for these two lights right above your sliding door. Our other one here is going to be for our island lights. And then our third one here is just for the ambiance lights. Turn these off so you can kind of see a little bit. Uh, or the ambiance lights above the slide room. All right, so now we're gonna get back on track again. So we're gonna have our residential fridge. Uh, basically you do gotta have 110 or sure power for this to have power. But inside here, you're able to adjust your temperature settings. So at this time, we do have the fridge set at 35 and the freezer set at minus two. You can change that by pushing the refrigerator button. After that, I think it goes back into the 40s. Yeah, 46, which I don't know why they would set that that high. And then you can do the same thing with your fridge or freezer. Uh, there is the option to wear ice plus, so it'll make the ice a lot faster for you as long as there is water in the coach. And that's gonna be located right down below here. Uh, so at this time I do have this switch turned off because there is no water inside it. Uh, once we have water running and going, you'll just hit that switch, turn it on, and we'll start making your ice for you. Then we got the microwave, pretty self-explanatory. I do like to say to set the timer on this. Uh, you guys go out, you come back, you see that there is no, <clears throat> the time has been reset on it. It shows you there, there was a power failure at the campsite. 
you do want to look and see if that was from the campsite itself or for the elect or from the electric company <clears throat> your fan is hooked up to the microwave as well and our light so you do have to have 110 for your vent fan and light for the stove uh, basically for the stove you're just going to turn this guy to a little let me turn that light back on so we can see a little better uh turn that guy right there to the little flame icon you're going to push it down the light once it's lit you'll turn it to your little dots but you got to keep this pressed down for like eight to ten seconds and then that flame will stay lit for you same concept with your oven as long as you position this this door just right you can usually catch the reflection off the glass of that lower piece and when you go to light as soon as you turn it to that little lightning bolt it's automatically going to try to start lighting once it's came on it's been lit for seven to ten seconds then you'll set your temperature turn that on the other side here is just a timer setting so you can set your timer you got your cabinet space up above drawers down below this guy here is going to have most of the manuals for the appliances in the coach the uh, four server no longer makes paper manuals for the camper specifically for that though what you do is we got this there's a sticker here uh, you download the uh, download uh, an app and then you'll put in your camper information and it'll basically download a PDF file for your camper you do got another light up here as well so you can kind of see if you need it to then we got our pantry area here that does have a motion sensor light so as you see it just popped on automatically for us they do provide you a little trash can as well and then we're going to have our island area with our sink our double sinks real real nice your hot cold water does have the options of a, just a steady stream or a sprayer setting and then once again you got that storage down below there as well so for your chairs whenever it is in travel you do have to make sure that these guys are locked up or in locked position i am going to actually unlock this right now so i can actually pull this out to show you right here on the side is where your lp slash carbon monoxide detector is located so with this guy you do want to test this every 10 or 9 to 14 days sorry about that basically by pushing this little button right here from there we're going to perform that test she'll go off again and go back to green all right these guys have a life expectancy of seven to ten years but i have seen them go out before that to find out the actual manufacturer date some of them's been putting them on the front now but if there isn't one on the front what you have to do is remove this and there will be a manufacturer date on the back side of that you do have also one you have two 110 hookups and then there's this light right here a little light switch gives you a little ambiance lights underneath your little island Ooh, pretty very cool Slide that guy back real quick and we'll re-secure him once we get done with our nice little virtual here so the vents on the floor is going to be for the furnace all the vents on the roof are for the air conditioner uh, then we got our massively long couch here um, you do have 110 hook up on each side as well uh, for this guy though this guy here you pull these cushions and then this guy here will fold up pull out our legs bring this guy forward he will sit down like so and then that back piece would fold down that not give us enough clearance there nice yeah. snug i like to get see a good snug fit on that uh, but then you'll put your cushions along that back wall edge there. Thank you, Miss Camera Lady. You're very welcome. They don't give you a lot of space to move around in this guy once you get that bed out. After that, you can actually remove these cushions here, all three of these cushions. They do actually have storage space underneath there. Ooh. And in the back corner, there's a little spot as well. And then you also do have storage here inside here. The only thing I do like to recommend is that your arms are super long because that guy is pretty darn deep. 
All right, then we basically got our steps up to the other bunk area. Basically, it's gonna be the same layout as the other side. The only difference is, is it doesn't have a spiral staircase. Uh, it just has your straight staircase. But other than that, everything up there is gonna be identical to the other side. Uh, you got your center cubbies. Uh, you're gonna have a fire exit window. You got your light switch, TV hookup, uh, 110 and USBs on each side of that little center island piece. Uh, basically, same concept. Uh, down here is where your central vac is located, so if you have your hose attachments, those can go right in there. Nice thing is, though, is you can actually sweep everything into a pile right here. Flip your switch. Lift that guy up, and then it can suck all into there. This guy does have, uh, a lot of these I've seen, they got like a double hole sided bag. Uh, you can look on that bag for that number to go look for, you know, when you go to Walmart, Target, anywhere that sells like vacuum bags, and uh, you should be able to get that bag. All right, the next we're going to go ahead and step into the bathroom area here. It's actually got a, ni a lot of nice space in here, it's very spacious. Um, but we'll start right here with the toilet. You got a nice little porcelain toilet. Uh, when you go to do your business, you're going to lightly press on the pedestal to add water. All the way down, it's going to flush. But you do want to leave some kind of liquid in the bowl of that toilet so that way that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle because that'll allow the smell to start coming through. It won't hold water in the toilet so you can do your business, things along that nature. Uh, one thing I do like to recommend is you take nonstick cook spray, spray the bowl of that toilet. And it makes everything slide down easier and makes it easier clean for the cleaner. I just always like to say, don't get bathroom pam confused with kitchen pam, or kitchen pam. <laughs> A little unsanitary. Next, you got your triple sliding glass door, pretty much, this guy here would fold the shut uh, they do have locks right here and on the inside so it does have a double lock feature pretty much what that's what these guys here are for just like so and then you got a super fancy nice shower area all right this thing I'm I really like these guys basically you can turn this on down here you would turn it on for your water your hot and cold but then from here, you're able to change. So right now it's showing us we've got our shower head, a nice good size shower head. And then you have the sprayer end. And then if you have it down here, you get two pulse or pretty much two jet sprayers that shoot straight out at you. I mean, it will hit you. When I turned them on, I mean, it was blasting at the wall. Uh, really nice looking feature, especially if you're trying to, you got a stiff back, you want to loosen those muscles. This guy's going to be great for that. We'll turn that back up to the shower head so you don't get alarmed when you go to turn it on the first time. And then inside here is where your washer dryer area would be located. Um, certain models are stackable. Uh, this shelf may have to come out. It depends on the size of the stackables. Uh, but then you got your washer hookups, your hot and your cold, and then your drain for him's up located up here. And then, like I said, though, it's just direct ducted. So you have to have that cap off or all that water is just going to back feed right in the side of the coach. And we just don't want that. No. Then we got our fan. Pretty much there's a button right here you push to push this out. Turn it on. It's not even loud. It's nice, super quiet. It is quiet. And then the close. Spaciously good sized window for the bathroom. Then you're going to have your fuse control panel box located down here. Anything that runs off sure power, so you have to be plugged in for it to work excuse me is all in the breakers everything that works off the battery is going to be on your fuses and they do have everything labeled for which breaker is which and which fuse is which on here for you it makes it nice simple and easy and it looks like our person has some good penmanship that day i can actually read some stuff <laughs> there's a lot of them it just looks like scribbles yeah that last one <laughs> uh you got storage in here pretty much you got your little breather tube for the bathroom sink there uh, and then up here is going to be where that switch is for the electric for the water heater. You have to make sure there's water in that water heater before you turn that on. That is very important. And then you got your, uh, pretty much your uh, toilet paper holder. They don't put them on. We don't normally put them on because we don't know where the customer wants them. Uh, pretty much this drawer here just folds out and kind of store some, you know, sponges, hand towels, whatever like that in there. You got your other drawer here. And then you got some shelving down below. Uh, one thing you do want to note with this guy is this guy is designed to have a low flow pressure 
so that way you can conserve on your hot water so the water does not come out of here real super fast like it would your kitchen or the shower or anything along those lines so just please be mindful of that then you got your GFCI right here so if some of the outlets in the coach ain't working check and make sure this guy has not been tripped if so you just push that button to reset them and then we got a little light switch right here does have a motion sensor light located right there so if you go to come in at night that light will automatically come on for you so you can kind of somewhat see all right so next we're gonna have our little entertainment center area here we kind of showed you how our tv goes up and down uh where do i stick our remotes at nope there they are we do have our remotes located right here this is considered to be a smart style tv i'm gonna turn that guy on while he's getting going and booted up talk about the radio real quick while he's loading uh basically we had the outside speakers on that's going to be speakers on two speakers on one is your inside speakers which is just these guys here you can have both of them on or just one or other on it's entirely up to you and then we have the fireplace down below the remote for him is going to be this guy right here you can turn it on you can change the temperature settings set a timer on it where it'll shut off on its own uh, adjust the flames or the color of the rocks this remote here is going to be for our radio all right now i gotta try to remember how i did this last time all right so you'll be at this page here go over to settings go down to live tv for sure it's what it is and then scan for channels and then that that's actually one of the simpler ones the last uh, video I tried to do with this style TV, it took me almost five minutes to figure out how to get to the channel scan again. It's fresh in my brain, so that's a plus. Uh, with the smart TV, you can't hook it up to the internet. Uh, we do not hook them up to the internet. Uh, the reason why I don't personally hook them up to the internet, because the last time I tried to do one, it took six hours to update, and I wasn't able to do anything else with the TV until it got done updating. <laughs> so when you go to hook this up to your t uh, internet, it may tell you there is an update for your TV. Just to be fair warning, it could take some time. It varies. <laughs> we did already do a channel search on it. We had, I think, 43 channels is what it showed. Uh, next, you got your little ottoman here. There is storage under the, in the ottoman as well. Basically, that would sit right there. I just have it over here for whenever the slides are brought in. Uh, it's not potentially going to get in the way of the slides. Doo -doo -doo. And then as we kind of come back around, we're basically made our way or made our way back to our sliding glass door. Uh, oh, the one thing I did go to show you, I did forget to show you guys these. These straps here are going to be for the fridge whenever it gets traveled. That way the doors don't pop open and potentially beaten on the side of the slide room or anything like that. Uh, you got a sh there's a short one here that goes around the top arms, basically just like this. And then your other one here will just wrap around like so and then secure tight. As I say like so, the Velcro wants to fight me. Just make sure those are snug tight. And then that way, as you see, if it tries to open, it's pulling itself right back in. And then your doors ain't even gonna open. All right, so from there, we have made our way around your coach. Hopefully this was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have questions, please feel free to call us and we will do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.